Welcome to a tutorial video on 22.1. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use passages within a story as storage for that story itself. Now, to start here, we're looking at the Twine Editor, and I have examples of how to do this technique in each major story format that comes as part of Twine 2.1. We have Harlow, we have Sugarcube, and we have Snowman. And I'll show how to do this in each story format as we go here. But to start, we'll start with Harlow. Now, notice I've already got it set as a the starting port for this story. Notice the little rocket ship is clicked here, and it's right here. So let's play. So while passages can represent game spaces, such as a location in a story, think of it as a room or a building or some type in some place in time, passages can represent those. They can also be used to hold other things, like image and text data, because each story format allows access to the source or sometimes called the text of a passage during a story, they can be used as storage spaces. So we can go and get something from a passage and do something with it. For example, in Harlow, to use a passage as a container for a base64 encoded image, that's an image where its binary data has been converted into text, we can do the following. And we'll look at this code here in just a few moments. But we see here a little portrait of me uh, as an image that's stored as text within a passage. So we're getting that textual data from a passage and we're making it into an image. So to call up raw text data, the same general idea follows. And we'll look at the code here in a few moments to show that we're pulling text data from another passage and displaying it, displaying it in this one. Now this technique is different than using the display macro as part of Harlow or as part of Sugarcube or the render function as part of Snowman where we're not executing code necessarily, we're actually treating it as data. So we're looking at the text as data. So getting the image text and getting the uh, raw text here. So let's close this and we'll shift to a different story format and look at that example again. So I'm going to shift over here and then to make sure it's rendered correctly, we come down here to the name of the story, click on it, and go change story format. Now I was using Harlow 2.0, in this case Harlow 2.0.1, and we're going to shift over to Sugarcube 2.18 and come down to play. And we see the same example again. For example, in Sugarcube, we can use the same general idea. So as a passage as a container, for a base64 encoded image. And notice we're now using Sugarcube, so it looks slightly different. But we notice the results are the same. We can look at the image here, and we look at the text down here. So OK, let's close this, shift to another story format. Come down here, click the name, change story format. And this time, Snowman. And close out of this, and come down and click play. Hey, for example, in Snowman, this is the same general idea. So the same technique across these different story formats in Harlow, in Sugarcube, or in Snowman, but the same general idea of using passages as a story. I have two different sort of case studies here. One as base64 image data, and another as raw text data. So okay, let's close this. Now let's go look at the code of these each in turn, and we'll start again with Harlow at the beginning. So we see here, it's not terribly complicated to access through Harlow's macros the source of another passage. In this case, the main thing going on is this right here. We use the passage macro looking for a passage with the name image. Then we use Harlow's format to look for this result's source that is the source of this result as well. We're setting it to a variable with the name image, then we're using the print macro to print out an image element in HTML with its source set to that result. Now the reason why we have to do it this way is sometimes the story formats get a little hung up when we try to intermix HTML and the macro usage at the same time. However, we can use the macro usage to construct an HTML element in this way. So we see initially an image and its source set to single quotation, the result of this variable, single quotation, and then the end of the element. And remember, as we saw in the result, it built that image for us with its source set to the, with its source set to the source of a passage with the name of image. Similarly, down here at the same general 
ID and technique, we can set text to be the source of a passage with its name raw text. And then we can display that in italics or emphasized here using markdown of a slant and then it's italicized. So that's how we do this in Harlow. The main idea of using the passage macro, looking for a certain passage by name and then getting its source. And then in the case of using a base64 encoded image, building an image element in HTML and getting Harlow's print macro to print that for us. Now moving over to Sugarcube, the, te the technique is very, very similar but the functionality is a little different how it's called. Notice we're also using Sugarcube's set macro here, setting image to, and then within Sugarcube, we use the story API, its get function to get a passage with the name image through here. And then as it's returned, since it's going to be a passage object, we can then use the passage API to get its text property. So we're getting a passage with the name of the name of image that's part of a story and then using its text and storing it to image. And then again, like the previous example in Harlow, we're using a print macro again to print out a construction of an image element in HTML with its source set to image. So it's the same idea here, set and then print that we just use in Harlow, but the functionality is just a little different in Sugarcube. And we see down here, like with the above example, it's the same general idea. Get a passage with the name raw text from the story and save its property text to the variable text. And then we're displaying it emphasized or italicized here using Markdown. So Harlow and Sugarcube are actually remarkably similar and to use this technique. The API is a little different, story get for Sugarcube and passage macro for Harlow, but the idea is the same. Moving over to Snowman, we see it gets a little different, but this technique is still the same. So in this case, we can actually use underscore templating system that's part of Snowman to get the result, to get the direct value of, using this equal sign, direct value of window story passage source, which is the same general idea we just saw in Sugarcube. Instead of, however, in Sugarcube using the story object to get something, we're using window story to get to use its passage function to return a passage object with the name of image. Then on its property, like we just saw in Sugarcube, we look at its source. So it's source in Snowman, text in Sugarcube, and source in Harlow, which is a little confusing, I understand, but it's the same general technique in each time, in each case, that is. So we're using the template system of underscore, since it's part of Snowman, to get this value right here. And then we're printing it inside of an HTML element of an image. So it's the same technique each time. So image and its source attribute set to something. In this case, set to the value source of a passage with the name of image. So the same idea in each time. And Harlow and Sugarcube Snowman, same idea. To pull up the data of a base64 encoded image. It's the same idea down here. Now, Snowman doesn't have any markup like Harlow and Sugarcube uh, do. So instead, what we do is the same technique again. We're looking for the source of a passage with the name of raw text. And then we're using HTML, in this case, to emphasize, to emphasize this result. But we saw in each case with Harlow, with Sugarcube, with Snowman here, that it all looked the same. It was the exact same technique, just different ways of going about this. So we saw the code that does it. Let's go look at the data itself. So down here with the image passage, we see it's base64 encoded image, which is just a whole lot of gibberish when we're looking at it here. But the important thing is it starts with data and it extends all through here. And we see it's a textual representation, base64 encoded, notice it says base64, of an image of an image's binary data which is an easy way to include images within a twine story using their textual representation. Remember, however, that while this does seem to be an easy shortcut to include a lot of images in twine, it also increases the size of the HTML result because we're including a whole lot of extra text each time. It's less than it would be to include the 
binary data of the images within the HTML, but uh, does increase the size of the story. So there's a little bit of trade-off here. Uh, and then we see here with the raw text, it's just raw text uh, created using a bacon uh, Ipsum generator, where it's just three paragraphs here. So why is this useful? Well, we saw immediately that it was useful with the image, because then we can include a lot of images and call them passages, and then we want to include them, if, for example, if we needed a background in one passage, or if we were creating sort of a visual novel setup and we needed a bunch of different pictures of avatars or things. This is a really quick way to store it within the story as a named as a passage, for this case image, and then just call it when we need it, and then just keep calling it instead of referencing anything else. With the raw text, it may not seem as obvious at, at first why that may be useful, but if we needed to store a lot of textual data, or if we needed to store sort of a database format, like if we had a lot of dialogue responses, we could actually store them in passages and then call those passages to pull the data instead of storing them within data objects, which is just sort of a different approach of doing that. But in each case here, we see the two different case studies. We can store base64 encoded data in passages. We can also store raw text in passages. And in each story format, in Harlow and Sugarcube and Snowman as part of Twine 2.1, we can get the source or the text, depending on the story format, and then do things with them. So we can effectively use passages as storage using the different story formats and different approaches to this as different ways to parse the data or show the data within Twine 2.1. Thanks for watching.